What's up everyone? Today we are going to talk about Johnson & Johnson recalling their sunscreen and why the stock price fell around 1.3%. So very interesting, a few, a few days ago there was actually some rumors about the vaccine, or not rumors, there was incidents about the vaccine actually causing neurological disorders or yes, being related to the neurological disorders. But the stock price didn't move much. However, now with the sunscreen being recalled, the stock price actually did move. So let's head over to the article and see what it says. So it says Johnson & Johnson had a bumpy week. First, its COVID-19 vaccine was linked to a rare case, rare cases of neurological disorder, and now it is recalling certain aerosol sunscreen. So Justin, check this out. If you go to the stock, right, from Okay, so this article basically, the, or the article about the neurological disease came out at around the 12th of July. So let's have a look at it. This was 12th July and up until the 13th of July, it was 0.12%. So yes, almost nothing happened. But now look at the article about the sunscreen being recalled. This was when it came out and that's a 1.3% drop. That's absolutely crazy, right? What do you think about that? Yeah, so I, th I think we've got to be careful of not letting this uh, discussion uh, degenerate into a discussion about pro-vaccine versus anti-vaccine. I think all of us engaged in this discussion are probably better off just keeping our own perspectives on the point. I think what is important to understand is that the market most often reacts in irrational ways and when you start to understand irrationality in markets that's when there's real opportunities to make money so i think one of the things that is very evident when we're looking at vaccines in particular uh, the COVID vaccines that are out in the market at the moment i think there is a huge trial going on at the moment we we've taken we've taken decades and there's certain diseases we haven't been able to successfully produce safe vaccines for you know COVID has been around, you know, for let's let's call it just under two years at this point, right? And uh, we we now have vaccines that are in the market that have been fast tracked, obviously because there's a huge sense of urgency. Now, I think it doesn't take a mathematician or a genius to figure out that probably there is an element of risk around these vaccines, and so they 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 probably with you vaccine anti vaccine. I think we can all accept. We're having to fast track things and so there's going to be some damage the question is why is the market not reacting to it in actual fact it would be more logical for the the market to react to the, the vaccine news because it so directly affects all of us uh, and potentially push the price down but yet yeah, exactly. it's the sunscreen it's the sunscreen that's pushing the price so i think that's it i think there's two reasons for it i think first of all we need to accept that people are desperate for solutions right now I think that those solutions lie in the hands of very few pharmaceutical companies at the moment in terms of vaccines. And so I think the general sentiment around vaccines is generally a lot more positive than it is negative. And so people are generally not following what you would think would be a logical chain of thought when it comes to this. Um, also, I think when it comes to the sunscreen factor, the this is a debate that's been waging on for years and years and years and years. I mean, so much so that you, you, you guys are probably going to laugh at me right now, but I actually make my own sunscreens, and I've and I've been saying this for years, right? Uh, I'm a surfer. I'm in the sun the whole time. If you have a look, I've got a very good reason to, to really worry about sunscreen, and uh, I have never felt comfortable taking sunscreens out of aerosols or, you know, your very chemically induced sunscreens for a very specific reason. And and I think this is now starting to come to the fore. And I think it's a debate that's been raging on a lot longer potentially than the vaccine issue. So I think there's a, there's a level of irrationality to it, but there is also a lot of longer term emotion driving these things. The long term emotion behind COVID is everybody wants a solution. So we're better off taking half a solution than no solution. And well, sunscreen, that's something we've been debating for the last two decades, whether or not aerosol sunscreens are safe for us or not. So I don't, I don't think there's too much mystery in terms of why things have happened. I think what's at the core of it is understanding the emotional driving factors. And, and this is why, uh, Davi, when we talk about the markets, when we talk about irrationality of markets, here's a really good example of it. The rational mind should say, well, vaccines is a much bigger thing. That should move the price. If there's a, if there's something that's causing neurological diseases, neurological problems, and it's in our vaccines, 
uh, chances are that stock should take a hit. And it hasn't taken a hit because why? Sentiment is still behind the stock. Why is sentiment behind the stock? Because God damn it, we all want a freaking vaccine that is going to save us, right? I'm not saying you should get a vaccine. I'm not saying I'm pro-vaccine. I'm not saying I'm anti-vaccine. I'm just saying we would all really like a magic little blue pill that would make the last 18 months of hell go away. Yes, look, I mean, if we start talking about the vaccine, I don't want to go into that at all because that's not the point of this video. But um, there was about 100 people out of the, 20, or out of the 12 million people that had, um, yes, obviously some side effects. And I think you can take any kind of medicine out there, even the, the natural ones. Some people will have side effects. That's just how the human uh, body behaves to it. But coming back to the stock and talking about the irrationality, I think that is the biggest the biggest takeaway that people can get from this is that the market behaves completely irrational. I mean, like you, like you said just now, you would, you would think that something like the vaccine news would actually drive the stock price down. I mean, if, 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 if the vaccine has to be recalled, it's got, it, it will have a huge effect on, on Johnson & Johnson. Yet, the, the stock took a beating because of the sunscreen. And I think that is the biggest thing people need to remember is that it's still driven by sentiment, by market sentiment. And it's completely, completely, how can I put it, <laughs> irrational. If you look at uh, something else I want to bring up here as well. I mean, look at Facebook. Everyone still uses Facebook. And we all remember the Facebook Analytica saga, or Cambridge Analytica, uh, yeah. Cambridge Analytica saga, right? Now look at this. Yeah. So during that year, Facebook actually had a few scandals. It was, in, it was in 2018. So it started off with the Cambridge Analytica. Then there was a few um, other incidents also that happened. But look at what the stock price did. Now, fundamentally, nothing changed with Facebook. Nothing actually happened yep. with them. However, look at the stock price. From 2018, when Cam Cambridge Analytica happened, up until the end of 2018, 22% drop in the share price. Now look at, look at this. If you take from December 2018, up until where we're sitting right now, that's a 130% increase. So this shows you once yep. again, it's completely irrational. It was just because of a series of bad information or s negative news that drove the stock price down and obviously that the incident had people take their money out of Facebook but fundamentally nothing happened with Facebook in fact Facebook kept on growing it's got a really good balance sheet actually or really good financials if we put it that way yeah. but that shows you that even in the bad news that's basically the time that you should actually start buying and that's not the time to start selling like Benjamin Graham said in the intelligent investor Investors knows when to buy. They what was that quote again? I think it's something like you buy or, or it sells to optimism and buys in pessimism. And I think that's very relevant to what's going on here at the moment. Not that I am saying that's the, that's the case with Johnson and Johnson, but I think that is the takeaway: is to keep in mind that you always need to look at the fundamentals first, and not really about not really look at the sentiment that's driving the market or the, the well, stock price at the current moment. Davi, the thing is, sentiment is a lot like an ex-wife. It's completely irrational. Okay, so I wouldn't know you would. The bottom, the, the, the bottom line is this, guys. There's a reason why we talk about a 12-step uh, analysis. There's a reason why we talk about a fundamental basis of making decisions for investing. There's a reason why we talk about leaning into the financials and not leaning into sentiment. Here is a classic case in point. The reason why we look so little at sentiment uh, is that we want to base we, we want to base our decisions on actual data, real facts, what it has happened, and where we see things going based on the numbers, right? And so the thing is, because sentiment is is irrational, it is very very hard to make a decision and put the odds in your favor based on sentiment. And sentiment, there is actually a better word for it, and that is it's called gambling. If you're investing into stocks based on sentiment, then you're absolutely gambling. Now, you know, I just want to bring up two stocks that have been in this that have been in the news the whole year this year, and that is AMC and uh, and GameStop. Now, so those stock prices are already, actually down quite a bit. Well, there's Let's actually there's actually a lot of news circulating around what's happening with AMC and GameStop, and GameStop being a potential, uh, sorry, rather AMC being a potential um, play amongst the hedge funds uh, to cover their short positions in GameStop, right? 
And uh, whether there's any basis uh, to the truth, any truth to us, we, we will see in the weeks to come. But here's the thing I want to tell everybody to really understand. There are public relations firms who are employed by hedge funds, who are employed by governments, who are employed by political parties to move markets. And I'll give you a classic example of this. And if you guys want to go and Google this after this, uh, this, this live stream or this video, go and have a look at it, right? So Al Pottinger is a PR firm out of the UK. They have basically instigated and created negative PR for countries in Africa, specifically to destabilize those countries why? Because it enables the resources to be accessed from the West at a cheaper price. Make no bones about understanding the role that PR has to play in moving markets. You know, a lot of people talk about uh, buy the news, sell the room, right? And there's an, element, there's an element of truth to it. And so one of the reasons why I don't like technical trading is because you can study graphs all day long. You can sit and candlestick yourself and you know look for your double triangles and whatever the hell you're looking at all day long all it takes is for one little real world event to happen and that real world event may be a pr company saying something that may be the company doing a press release it may be a fundamental problem in the company that occurs it may be a governmental issue it could be a number of factors and that changes your technical trades completely the reason why i don't like sentiment trading which by the way if you talk to most uh, day traders, if you talk to most what they classify as momentum and growth investors, they're essentially operating to a large degree on sentiment. And the reason mm. why I disagree wholeheartedly with sentiment-based trading is because the odds are not in your favor. The odds are not in your favor because you have not sat down and calculated your risk. And so when people say to me, Justin, Past results are not indicative of future earnings. I have a great example. We had that comment once table. again. We had that comment again in our comments over the weekend, I think. <laughs> a absolutely. I mean, it's a comment we see every single day. But I have a great real-world example to give to you from the roulette table. Okay? It's a very, very, simple, very simple strategy. If you ever want to play roulette and win a little bit of money, it's called playing the, it's called playing the law of probability. Okay, you wait for the table to go a certain direction multiple times in a row. And the law of probability states that it will go in the opposite direction at some point, right? So if it goes black, let's say 212 times, I mean, I'm exaggerating it just for sake of the example. There is a higher chance of probability that on the 212th time that it's going to turn red than it would have if it has just been going black once. Okay, so it's called the law of probability. Now, when it comes to analyzing stocks and comes to analyzing numbers, we're using a very similar theory, except instead of going in the opposite direction, we are basing it on the fact that it's going to continue to go in the same direction, which is either growth or negative growth, right? And so this is what people need to understand. If you follow a systematic approach to investing, you're going to put the odds in your favor at least 70% of the time. I've been trading for 25 years, 75% of my trades are profitable. The trades that are not profitable for me are usually the trades that I've gone in on sentiment more than I followed the fundamentals. And a great case in an example right now is cryptocurrency, right? There are no solid fundamentals behind cryptocurrency. Yes. It is entirely a speculative market. It has no underlying value that can be calculated quantified and equated and so this example that we're seeing right now where for some illogical reason sunscreen dropped the share price the bad news around sunscreen dropped the share price for them versus the vaccine which is a way bigger issue right? yes. a way bigger issue is the proof in the proof in in right in front of us here that sentiment is like an ex-wife it is irrational <laughs> so listen guys if you want to actually go on the fundamentals and i know most of you watching this video are interested in the johnson and johnson stock 
simply go to our channel, scroll down in the videos, do the Johnson & Johnson stock analysis. There is a really great analysis Justin have done, also based on his 12-point checklist. So if you're interested in the actual fundamentals of Johnson & Johnson, go check out the video. And then obviously, remember to subscribe, give the video a like if you agree, and also give, the, give us your comments on, these, on this news in the comment box below. Remember to subscribe to get more videos like this. If you like money, creating wealth and want financial freedom, please join our money tribe by clicking the subscribe button below this video now. And because I know you need a little extra motivation, every month we will give away a copy of our book, The Money Secret, along with some really cool channel merchandise. And we will give it to active subscribers on this channel. So make sure to click the subscribe button below this video now and click the bell icon to be notified whenever we do more videos like this.